I am going to evaluate five limits using L'Hopital's rule. So really quick, we use L'Hopital's rule only when the limit has zero over zero or infinity over infinity. These two are the two of the seven indeterminate form, all right? Zero over zero or infinity over infinity, we use L'Hopital's rule. Otherwise, we do not use L'Hopital's rule. So the first limit, we have e 2 times e to the 5x minus 2 divided by sine of 3x. So when you plug in x equals to 0, the top is 2 minus 2. The bottom sign of 0 is equals to 0. So since we have 0 over 0, we will apply L'Hopital's rule. So we, when we apply L'Hopital's rule, we write an h. h means in the following step, we take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So we we'll start with a limit x approaches to zero, the derivative of the top. So that is e to the 5x and then times phi, right? So phi times two is equals to 10. The derivative of two is equals to zero. The derivative of sine is equals to cosine and then the by chain rule, the derivative of three x is equals to three. Now, plug in zero to see if we still have zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So when you plug in a zero, you have e to the zero power, so 10 times e to the zero power minus zero, and then cosine of zero is equals to one. So we have three times cosine of zero. So the top is, the top is 10 minus zero, right? e to the zero power is one. So we have 10 minus, zero which is equals to 10 and then the bottom is 3 times 1 equals to 3. So since we can just plug in zero to evaluate the function, there is no need to apply L'Hopital's rule. All right, so this is your final answer. Uh, in L'Hopital's rule problem, if you change the function a little bit, that changes the whole thing. So for example, so let me use another color to do it. So if we change the problem to limit as x goes to zero, you have two e to the five x minus two, but if you change the bottom to a cosine, of 3x. So let's say we have a problem and this is the very beginning. This is the given. Do we still need to apply L'Hopital's rule? The answer is no. So in this case, you can just plug in the zero to evaluate the limit. So this is e 2 to the zero power minus 2 and then cosine of zero. So this is not an indeterminate form. The top is two minus two equals to zero, but the bottom is one because cosine of zero is equals to one. So this one you have zero divided by one that is equals to zero. So there is no need to apply L'Hopital's rule. So no need to apply L'Hopital's rule. All right, so let's go to the next function. So the next function we have a limit as x goes to infinity. The top we have ln x to the third, the bottom we have 4x squared. So obviously when you plug in infinity, you have an infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate form. So let me, um, I have infinity over infinity. And then the next step we apply L'Hopital's rule. So this problem we have to apply L'Hopital's rule three times to get out of the indeterminate form. So the first time x approaches to infinity, you apply a chain rule on top, right? So you bring the three down, you have ln x squared, and then the derivative of ln x is one over x, and then the bottom gives you an ax. And then you simplify you still clean up the one over x on top. So you bring an x to the bottom, then the function becomes limit as x approaches to infinity. Again, I did not write h. That means I am only cleaning up the function. I be like putting the terms in, in a different position or rewriting the function. I am not applying L'Hopital's rule. So we have three ln x square divided by a x square. I just put this to the denominator. So the one over x to the denominator, so the denominator becomes an x square. I just rewrite the function. I did not op apply L'Hopital's rule. I only applied the first L'Hopital's rule in this step. And then plug in infinity to check, you still have infinity over infinity. So that means you have to apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. So let's do another L'Hopital limit as x approaches to infinity. Always clean up the terms before you apply the rule. Okay, so this time you bring the two down, we have six and then ln x 
and then the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, the derivative of the denominator, which is 16x. And then you carry the 1 over x down to the denominator. You have limit as x approaches to infinity. You have 6 times ln x divided by 16x squared. Plug in infinity, you still have infinity over infinity. So we apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. We have x approaches to infinity. The denominator, you have uh, 16 times 2, right? So let's, let's just bring the 2 down. You don't need to mul multiply them. And then you have x, the top, you have 6 times 1 over x. Let's clean this up and then we plug in infinity. So we have limit as x goes to infinity. You have uh, 6 divided by 16 times 2. And then you have an x squared. So when you plug in an infinity, you have 6 divided by infinity. This is equals to 0. Okay, so that is the answer to the second limit. So moving on to the third limit, the third limit, I'm going to do something a little bit different. So this time I'm going to do a limit as x approaches to 1. And then the top, I have 2x to the a power minus 2. And then the bottom, I have 2x to the b power minus 2. And I have to specify that b cannot be equal to 0. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what x equals to, you already have a 0 in the denominator. So when you plug in x equals to 1, what, what do you get? When you plug in x equals to 1, so 1 to the any power is just 1, right? The a and b are just a constant. So you have 2 minus 2 divided by 2 minus 2, which is a 0. So you have to apply L'Hopital's rule and then you draw an h, so we have limit as x approaches to 1, you bring the a down, so you have 2 times a, x to the a minus 1, and then the denominator, you bring the b down, so 2b, x to the b minus 1, the, denom the derivative of 2, 0, 0. Can you plug in? Uh, the answer is yes, so if you just plug in, you have 2 a, x to the 1 minus 1, divided by 2b, x to the 1 minus 1, x to the 0 power, oh, x equals to 1, huh? not a, a and b. Okay, I'm going to re re write it for you. So when x is equals to 1, you have 1, a minus 1, divided by, and then 2b, and then 1, raised to the b minus 1. All right, so what, what, what do you get? The 2's got cancelled, and then the 1, the ones got cancelled and then at the end of the day you only have a over b and then at the end of the day uh this one you can write in, in another line because the a and b are just a constant right so let's say a equals to 5 and then b equals to 10 1 to the fourth power and 1 to the ninth power is just a 1 so that's why i said that the two and the ones got cancelled you have an a over b so let's just just live 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 it like like that a over b so this is your final answer all right so how about the next limit so the next limit i am going to do something that looks more unusual so the f at your first glance this looks like a very complicated limit so as x goes to infinity you have the x root so this is a radical sign and then x so what what, what do you have this one, if you just plug in, you have infinity, and then the x root is 1 over infinity, right? So this is infinity, 1 divided by infinity is 0, and then this is one of the indeterminate form, infinity raised to the 0 power, that is not equal to 1. So this is one of the indeterminate form, but since this is not 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you cannot apply L'Hopital's rule in your first step. At, in this situation, when the base has a variable and its exponent has a variable, you have to do the following step. The first step is I am going to let y equals to the function, right? So y equals to the function, the x root of x. And then I'm going to carry the x root down. The only way to do this is you ln both sides. So you ln the left side, and then when you ln the right side, you have x raised to uh, 1 over x, right? So due to the properties of ln, you can just bring the 1 over x down. Ln x, you study that when you uh, study natural logarithm, the properties of natural logarithm. 
okay so if you don't remember you can look it up on my channel i have video that explains how this works and everything else regarding the properties of the, the natural log ln and the common log log and then you take the limit on both sides so on the left hand side you have limit as x approaches to infinity you have ln of y and then on the right hand side you have limit as x approaches to infinity of 1 over x times ln x so we started with this step. I just let y equal to the function, and then I ln both sides, bring the exp exponent down, and then I take limit on both sides. Okay, so I am taking limit on both sides, and then now tell me, do we have infinity over infinity on the right on the right hand side? Sure, right? So ln infinity is infinity, and then the one over x that gives me an infinity in the denominator. So that tells me this line works for the L'Hopital's rule. And then we apply L'Hopital's rule. So we join H, L'Hopital's rule. What is that equal to? So we have limit as x approaches to infinity. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So this is ln x divided by x, right? And then the derivative of x is equals to 1. If you are still thinking about a, a quotient rule, you are thinking about the wrong thing. L'Hopital's rule is you have a fun you have a rational function, a numerator divided by denominator. L'Hopital's rule asks you to take the derivative of the top and then the derivative of the bottom. This is not a quotient rule. Okay, derivative of the numerator divided by derivative of the denominator. Okay, so can we plug in infinity? Of course. So this is 1 over infinity divided by 1. 1 over infinity is 0. 0 divided by 1 is equals to 0. Now, is this the final answer? The answer is no. This equals to 0 is not the final answer. Why? Because we have ln y equals to this. So this 0 is for ln y. I didn't ask you to do ln y. I, I, I gave you this. The x root of x, there is no ln y in there, right? And then how do we take care of this? So you have to do one more step. So after you got this zero, so you have to do more. So we have limit as x approaches to infinity. So we have ln of y equals to zero. That is exactly the conclusion we just came up like a couple seconds ago. And then what is the base of ln? The base of ln is e right the base of ln is e can you put this back to exponential form the answer is yes that is easy so you have e to the zero power equals to y that is exponential form and then e to the zero power is equals to one so that tells me y is equals to one and then what else do, 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 do you do you have this as your first step right so you let y equals to this all right so you let y equals to this and then you write you ln as x approaches to infinity. You let y equals to that, right? So you have the x root of x, and this is what you let y equals to. So you we call that you let y equals to this, x and x, right? And then what else do, do you write? This whole thing is what? Is equals to 1. So this whole thing is equals to 1. This is y, right? And then y is equals to 1. So that means this whole this is equals to y. And then y is equals to 1. That means this is just equals to 1. And then what? where is my final answer? My final answer is right over here. This is what I asked at the very beginning. Again, this is y and y is equals to 1. So that's why the limit is equals to 1. If y is equals to 10, then the limit is equals to 10. If okay so let's move on to our last problem our last problem has a trigonometric term in it so our last problem i would like you to do a limit as x approaches to one from the left i have to use the left i have to specify the left inverse cosine of x which is arc cosine divided by x minus one so this one uh think about the graph of arc cosine or co inverse cosine you will see this or you can just look it up online so uh, the graph looks like that looks like that that's it uh, starts right here and then ends right here so this is from negative 1 to 1 and then this point is negative 1 comma pi and then this y intercept is 0 half pi and then this point is 1 comma 0 okay so three points and then 
when x is equals to 1 from the left. So why do I have to put 1 from the left? Because if you look at the graph uh, of, of inverse cosine, just look at the graph of inverse cosine, there is nothing on the right hand side of 1, right? So I have to say x approaches to 1 from the left. Okay, if you look at the graph of the entire function, you will see that when x is when x approaches to one from the right, there is nothing. You can quickly graph the, the function. So you have to let x goes to one from the left. There is nothing on the right. Okay, do we have any indeterminate form? Uh, inverse cosine. So when x approaches to one from the left, we have a zero. And then the top is one minus one. So overall, you have zero over zero. This is indeterminate form. And then you take, apply L'Hopital's rule, x approaches to one from the left. Uh, the derivative of in arc cosine or inverse cosine, uh, you, you, you can look it up. I already talked about the derivative of inverse trigonometric function. This is negative one divided by the square root of one minus x squared. And then the denominator, the derivative of x is equals to one, the derivative of one is equals to zero. So overall, you have limit as x approaches to one from the left. You have negative one divided by one minus x squared. Can we just plug in negative one? The answer is absolutely yes. But this one, you have to do some thinking, some processing in your mind. So what should you have in your mind right now? So here is here is what. So you have you have to start with the you have to start with the bottom. So you have to plug in a one from the left, right? So you are thinking about negative one square. So what is that equal to? So I will think about this is as 0 0.9 oh, 1, huh? 1 past the 1, okay, past the 1 from the left. The minus should be right here. I am thinking about 0 0.999, and then you square that because this is a number that is a little bit on the left side of 1, uh, just a little bit less than 1. So this one, you square that, do we agree that you will get something that is 1, but a little bit less than 1, right? And then that is what you plug in, and then you have 1 minus x squared. So that means you have one minus something that is a little bit less than one. So I will be thinking about think one minus 0 0.9999. So we have 0 0.0001. So this is something that is slightly greater than zero. And then what happened when you take the derivative of this? When you take the derivative of this, you will just get something that is slightly greater than zero, right? Because the derivative of positive is positive. All right, so that means at the end of the day, at the end of the day, look, you have negative one divided by something a little bit greater than zero. What, 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 what is that equal to? Something a little bit greater than zero. So that gives you, is that an undefined? Uh, nope, 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 nope. That gives you negative, negative infinity because you are thinking negative one divided by this. something a little bit greater than zero. So if you change the decimal to a fraction and then uh, take the reciprocal, you will have a huge numerator, so which is negative infinity. And then this is the answer to the given limit. So if you check out the graph, the graph of inverse cosine of x divided by x minus one, uh, the graph, the graph looks like this. You have your x, you have your y axis, and then you have your x axis. The graph starts at one point and then go up a little bit and then go all the way down. And then there is a vertical asymptote when x equals to one. So that's why we have to say x approaches to one from the left because there is nothing on the right hand side. And then this point is negative one comma negative pi over two. Starts at that point and then go up a little bit and then drop straight down to negative infinity. So in this, uh, if you check out the graph of this, the, the graph as x approaches to one from the left, and then you can see that y goes all the way down to negative infinity, which confirms my answer over here. All right, so that is the end of this video. If you like it, you think this is helpful, give me a like, share, and a subscribe, and I will see you in the next video for more examples. Signing out.